I just mitered this chromoly tube to fit against this one like you would do on a bicycle frame and the fit is tight but they're not ready to be welded together because this ed edge is ragged so it needs to be dressed back and cleaned up. Let me show you how I do that. So the way it comes off the machine, you have first of all this heavy burr. This is real nasty. You don't want that on there. The next thing that you need to do is that it, it here the tubing is sort of perpendicular to the center line. This mitered edge is perpendicular to the center line of the tube, but out here it's not perpendicular. It comes in at the shallow angle, and so you have this thin little edge here. And when you go to weld these together, you have the, the whole, you know, the meaty tube here, and then you're on the edge here, if you were to follow this line with your weld bead, you'd be welding on this really thin uh, part of the tube. And so what you want to do is blunt it back. You grind these sort of ears back so that it's a little bit closer to being 90 degrees to the tube center line again. And then, and then when you do these, it's more like a lap joint, and you can actually get on the meat of this tube and the meat of this tube with your weld bead at the same time. Finally, you just want to clean the tube. So the outside of this one is already polished. If you had a tube with mill scale like this, you would just want to mechanically polish the outside with emery cloth. And the inside also has mill scale here. So you want to get it shiny metal and then wipe it off with at least simple green, if not something like acetone. So step one, I wanna just get rid of all this, this chunky burr. And there's a lot of ways you can do this. You can hold it in a bench vise with a tubing block and you can hit that with a hand file. That works great, I used to do that before I had one of these guys, which is a one by 30 inch belt sander. I love this. You could also use uh, something like a bench grinder or a disc sander and uh, anything where there's you know a moving abrasive and then you kind of move the the tube edge up against it so the thing about this is that it generates a lot of static charge especially in the colder drier months and we're in the dead of winter this thing is shocking me like crazy but i'll just deal with it and you can watch in the video maybe i'll, I'll try and figure out a solution to that problem for myself that'd be interesting but for now So I'm getting close on this side. You can see now it's it's no longer got this jagged edge on this side of the tube. And I've kind of blunted it back so that when I lay these over each other and I'm welding in that weld bead, I can actually get penetration into the meat of this tube and the meat of this tube at the same time. And I'm not out on this thin flange, but I'm actually getting right into the heart of the tube. Now that's looking pretty decent. It's really blunted back, but I still have a burr on the inside. There's a couple ways to get rid of that. This tool here, I just have tape wrapped around the handle, but it's a triangular scraper. This is made out of high speed steel. This is about $10 from MSC Industrial Supply or any place that'll sell tools. And it's even a little bit dull right now, but basically you grind this on a bench grinder so that it's sharp. And now you can scrape the inside of tubing really nicely. Another way to get that would be to use something like this Dremel tool. So I have a sanding drum on here and I can hit that on the inside diameter of the tube. Pretty quickly that'll take care of the burr and I can even use that to get rid of the mill scale on the inside. So when it comes to cleaning the inside of the tubing from mill scale, there's actually some considerations about that. So let's say it was a seat stay that was going to a plug dropout where you were going to have silver brazing the uh, connecting the inside of the tube diameter to the plug. You would definitely want bright shiny metal on the inside of the tube because there's a there's a weld joint or a braze joint going on there. Uh, if you were doing a, a fillet braze top tube or something and you want to get a little bit of an internal fillet, you want bright shiny metal on the inside of the tube it's not always the case that you clearly obviously need the inside of the tube to be bright shiny metal and maybe you don't want to spend the time polishing it up if you're surly bikes or you know maxway who makes them if you're some huge production company you maybe don't want to expend the time on that but we're small scale we're making stuff that we're proud of my thought process has always been i'll just take a minute clean it polish it get it to bright shiny metal i don't need to worry about that step in the process having been glossed over i just know that i did it right 
right. So, so I'll polish it up using a sanding drum on a Dremel, a flap drum, you can put those on a drill or on a Dremel, or uh, you can get like a wood dowel rod and put emery cloth around it and then scrub the inside of the tubing. And then that way you know that you have a good prepared joint. This 1 by 30 inch belt sander also does a great job of polishing the outside of the tube diameter. So this one here has a mill scale finish, that gray dull finish. You really want to shine that up before you weld. Or uh, in the case of this, this tube is already polished. It looks pretty good. You wouldn't necessarily need to polish it as much, but I'll just give it a quick hit while I'm here. And then I know that it's, it's fresh, shiny metal. I tried welding over mill scale one, you know, I always knew that you weren't supposed to. I tried it once, just I was like, what's the worst that could happen? Why do we spend so much time doing this? It welded like total garbage. Like it really makes a huge, huge difference with TIG welding. If you're doing stick welding or MIG welding or some other process, uh, it's different. But with TIG welding, trying to get your best work, fancy thin bike tubing, you gotta clean mill scale. So I got a bunch of tubes to deburr and clean up and I'm just gonna do them. And I'm gonna get shocked a lot of times and it's gonna suck. Here we go. So I'm gonna use Simple Green and a paper towel to clean these. You could also use acetone, or I used to use lacquer thinner. The idea is you just wanna get the oils and the dirt and anything that's left on the surfaces off of there. If you're doing even fussier work like titanium or stainless steel where impurities are really critical to keep out of there, you're probably gonna to wanna to use acetone, or I even heard Mike Zanconato say that he likes to use reagent grade acetone, really, really fancy stuff. Um, but for steel, Simple Green has worked well for me, so that's what I'm going to be using today. Look at all that stuff on the inside. So I would consider those clean enough for the kind of welds that I'm going to do today. And then I might also do the same thing on my filler rod if it was real dirty stuff. So what we have here is a clean joint. The miter is blunted. It fits together nicely, and uh, we just don't have to worry about burrs on the inside or impurities uh, leading to a failure of the joint. What you really want with welding is the best preparation you can get so when you flip your hood down and you strike your arc, you get that really nice, clean weld puddle and things go as planned and you're, you're making your best work. You know, we're not just uh, hacking stuff together when we're making beautiful bike frames. We're trying to make beautiful stuff that we can really be proud of and, and send out into the world that people are gonna ride, maybe down a big hill really fast, you know? Uh, maybe take it over a big jump if it's a, if it's a mountain bike or something. So, uh, you know, we just wanna take the time to get the prep right so that everything else goes smoothly. Uh, you know, there's a lot of loaded opinions about what works best for cleaning and, you know, this is sort of what I found to work and you'll hear different advice from different people if you read and talk to folks so uh, you know have your ears open for that but I just wanted to give sort of a basics of what I do and what I think works pretty well for most steel fabrication hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next video